to Rule Breaker. Today we're going to take a look at the recently released Council Keller's faction for Twilight Imperium 4th edition. This one comes straight out of Codex 3 and as you can see this is a printout on multiple cards that I've got here that I've gotten from a, from a third party seller on Etsy so it's not the official um, race sheet because none exists and um, let's uh, let's take a look at what these guys do now they're they're quite different in a lot of ways to the the factions that we've seen before and that is immediately evident right at the very start when you look at their first ability here the tribuni or tribuni I don't know how to pronounce that um which reads during setup choose an unplayed faction from among the mentak the extra and the urgent flight Take that faction's home system, command tokens, and control markers. Additionally, take the Keller's hero that corresponds to that faction. So actually, we think we'll we'll take a quick look at the different potential home systems and the potential heroes now um, before going into the rest of the stuff uh, to give better context about what's to come. All right, so here you see the three different... Uh, starting systems that are applicable here for the Council Keller is there is there is the uh, Mentak Coalition homeworld which has a 4-1 Mall Primus single planet there is the Exja home system which is Arch and Ren and Arch and Tau which is um, a 2-3 and a 1-1 one, one. and then you've got the Argent Flight's home system which is Valk, Avar and Ylir Probably I'm pronouncing that correctly, which is a 0 2, a 1 1, and a 2 0. Um, so they're all similar. They, like this one equals a total of 5, this one equals a total of 7, and this one equals a total of 6. Um, so they're all within sort of the same ballpark. The different, the different benefits and, and uh, penalties really are more flexibility with the cards that you can exhaust with the Argent, and they have. A fairly good mix between um, both. They've got three yellow altogether and uh, three blue altogether, resources and influence. Then on the extra ones, um, you've got the biggest numbers of all on two different cards, um, quite a bit of both. So you've got four influence and three resources. And then on Mall Primes, you only got the one card to exhaust, but it's a hefty one, it's a 4 1. So when it comes to um, your decision on which of these to choose at the start. There's not a massive difference between these. It really depends on, on what you like. And frankly, the hero is probably the more valuable thing to look into. So let's bring them into play here now. All right, so we've got here the uh, Mentak Harka leads. And uh, we've got the Exja, which is Odlin Mur. And wish me luck with this one, the Argent Flight, which is Kuasi on Jalatai. Definitely didn't get that one right, but we'll see how we go. Um, so um, all of these have the same unlock. They all require you to have uh, three scored objectives, and then when you unlock, uh, they would flip over. So like so, um, the Mentak one becomes Erwan's Covenant. The extra one becomes Operation Archon, and the Overwing, Z Overwing Zeta is the Argent Flight hero here. So let's take a look at these individually, and then maybe we can assess which one we think is the best, or depending on what type of gameplay you want to have, what's more suitable for you. All right, we'll start with Erwin's Covenant, the Mentak version, and the action here is reveal cards from the action card deck until you reveal three action cards that have component actions. Draw those cards and shuffle the rest back into the action card deck, then purge this card. So a component action, just to remind everybody, is like something that says action on it, like this card itself. So that can be um, like a an action on a mech or an action on a card or an action on something as long as it says action on it I think um, so you're looking for three action cards that have that that bolded italics action word on them um, now just to remind everybody the action card deck is quite large yeah uh, yeah so it's quite large here it is here is a ton of cards in there right now right so 
if you're looking for a specific card um, you've got to get through all of these uh, to, to get the one that, that you're looking for you're very unlikely to get a, a specific card this way like it's just you know anything with these action cards on them so there are quite a few that don't have a component action on them um, but there are loads that do right so it's a slim chance that you're going to get what you want honestly um, it does give you more stuff to do on a turn so if you need to stall for whatever reason on your turn when, you, when you're at this point in the game this is a way to do that grab a bunch of these component action action cards and slow things down so they give you a chance to react I think that's probably the main benefit of it you may get something like a sabotage which um, cancels hits or cancels action cards or something like one of those kinds of cards um, but it is the look of the draw so a bit random um, and then purge the card obviously you get to do that once then this is gone uh, so it's a single use uh, hero like just about every hero in the game um, so that's the Mentak that is Erwan's Covenant uh, and then in comparison the extra one here is quite different it's after an agenda is revealed uh, you may cast up to six additional votes on this agenda predict aloud the outcome of this agenda for each player that votes for another outcome gain one trade good and one command token then purge this card um, so kind of manipulative you're trying to sway the rest of the table to influence an agenda that's quite extra um, you get six additional votes so that's a bit of clout that's equal to Mechatol Rex same number of uh, influence um, by predicting aloud you are either forcing people to do what you want or saying um, hey you're giving me a trade good and a command token to my pool for my reserve if you disagree with me so upside on both uh, likewise you are beholden to the agenda deck so much like the previous um, action card based hero there is a certain amount of draw uh, top decking involved here in, in your decision making um, but it may it may have a more impactful outcome m more frequently than the action card hero I would imagine so um, potentially a bit more likely to give you a better outcome and then on to the third one the Argent Flight Overwing Zeta this one reads at the start of a round of space combat in a system that contains a planet you control place your flagship and up to a total of two cruisers and or destroyers from your reinforcements in the active system then purge this card so also gone after you do it now this one is a bit more predictable this is one that you get very clear tangible benefits that you can control and um, that you can quantify ahead of time which is the difference between this one and the other two the fact that you're getting your flagship and remember it's not the Argent flagship it's the Keller's flagship which we'll be looking at in a moment um, it means that you know exactly what you're going to get and for that reason if you like predictability if you like to be able to plan ahead um, it's yeah it's it's just a bit more predictable um, just for context while, while we're here the um, the flagship is called Artemiris I think um, and it has the ability other players must spend two influence to activate the system that contains this ship um, so it's something that going forward players will have to do in order to attack a system so it's a nice way of locking down the system or making it harder to get there um, however just to remind everybody this condition here for overwing zeta is at the start of a round of space combat in a system that contains a planet you control so this is a defensive move in that if someone comes into your system um, that you want to defend you can flip this and you can get your flagship um, you're not going to be able to do this on the assault you're not going to be able to do this when attacking somebody's home system or um, a system that someone else controls unless you've got a planet in there in some kind of situation so all right now let's take a look at the rest of the setup here um, so the starting stuff for the um, for the Keller is is different to what the Argent Flight, the Mentak, and the X Chad get. So just just bear that in mind. And um, it's on the back of the uh, Keller's card. I've got 
portion of it here is because it's more convenient for filming. Um, so you've got the starting units here, okay? So um, again, very different from what you can expect with the the factions as they are normally. Um, so we start with two infantry. Um, I'm just going to use the uh, urgent flight. I'm just going to use the urgent flight home system um, for the example here. And um, we get two carriers. So I really like those. Like having two carriers at the start of a game. Um, they have two fighters. Nice little shot shields. Um, they have one cruiser. Like so. And then they have a space dock, of course. So everybody needs a space dock. Start the game. Um, so something about this, right? There's no real specialist ships. There's no dreadnoughts. There's no uh, destroyers. No war sums. None of that stuff. Nothing really massive. They don't start with any mechs. They don't start with any cool stuff. They um, they have the basics really. Um, the two infantry is is tricky. The two infantry is is not a lot, right? So um, you're probably going to be trying to improve that before you even fly out in most start games with the Kellers. Uh, depending on your position and um, so just be aware of that like that's a real limitation even though you got the two carriers here um, if you can find a way to get more infantry out there it's going to be really beneficial to you otherwise you're going to have a very slow start um, starting technology choose two non-faction technologies owned by other players this could literally be any technology at all yeah so essentially the starting technology it, it could be anything it could be any combination at all so that again adds an element of randomness and an element of potential confusion and complication at the start of the game. It's for mainly this reason here actually that I would highly recommend that only experienced players use the Kellerus Council faction. Um, if you have never played Twilight Imperium before and someone hands you this faction, just say here gives a different one, please. Because yeah, that's just very complex. Um, yeah, so that's the setup highly unpredictable for other players in the game as well so react when you see what they're doing I guess is, is something that you could think about right, so let's take another look at the rest of what this faction can do all right so let's take a look at the rest of their uh, racial abilities up here we've got council patronage replenish your commodities at the start of the strategy phase then gain a trade good so Free commodities, that's good. You're not beholden to the trade strategy card. Okay, just a reminder, the commodities are the ones that are here on your board. They're the ones that have the kind of, they're meant to be on the gray side, not the yellow side. Um, they're the ones that you can trade. We're also getting a trade good for your um, for your actual supply. Um, so that's pretty nice, honestly. Like you will see that you can use these in different ways uh, in a minute as well. Um, so yeah. That's, that's nice, that's nice to have. The other ability here, Laws Order, is you may spend one influence at the start of your turn to treat all laws as blank until the end of your turn. Now you can use this trade good for that purpose. The main thing about this is you can do this as many times as you want. Uh, so you can do it every turn if you have the influence. It's not something that gets exhausted like a card. Um, and the other thing to be aware of is that you may never use this in a game, you may never have to do it. It's just a nice little extra thing to have in case uh, you are being bullied with uh, laws and things like that. Uh, so a little bit of utility for the council to work with. Um, we've already taken a look at their flagship. Um, you'll see that they don't have any like special ship units here of any real kind um, their space dock is also standard stuff so nothing out of the ordinary there aside from all of that setup malarkey um, so now let's take a look at their heroes and mech and their racial technology and something special that comes with them as well now when it comes to heroes, we've already talked about the three potential heroes here. We've also got the level one and the level two guys. So the level one, which is Xander Alexin Victory the <laughs> Third, um, he has the ability at any time you may exhaust this card to allow any player to spend commodities 
as if they were trade goods. So that's the synergy that goes with your filling up commodities at the start of the round. So effectively, any commodities that you have in your um, commodities section of your race board, um, you can exhaust this guy um, to use them as if they're trade goods. So you can do it at any time, and then you exhaust the card. That's done once. It can only happen once per turn, but you can use these as the correct type, the trade good type. So that's that's a nice bit of utility. You can also let other players do that. Um, if you're going to let other players do that, make sure you get something in return, make a deal. Um, I'd say almost every time it's going to be using it yourself. And then for Sufi Anne, the level two, um, she unlocks when you spend a trade good after you play an action card that has a component action. Uh, so that spending the trade good is just something that you do to unlock her, not as a part of the card, otherwise you'd be looking for very specific cards. Um, so let's say you play a sabotage or you play a direct hit, you can then play a trade good to flip her over. Um, you may also use um, Xander Alexin here, exhaust him to use a commodity as a trade good to unlock Sufian. Okay, so there you go. A bit of a combo thing to unlock some stuff uh, for the Kellers. And her ability then is after you perform a component action, you may perform an additional action. And that's an always on ability that sits there and is, doesn't have to be exhausted like this guy. It's just always there. So anything that has that action word on it. Um, essentially means you can go again do another thing so that can be really cool the you may part is important you might choose not to do a second one that's fine you don't have to keep uh, doing a second one um, and I believe this only works once once you've done your additional action you, you don't get to keep going I think it only happens the first time okay so that's Zufian that's all of the different agents and heroes and stuff for the council calories lots going on um all to do with component actions and trade goods as commodities and then uh action cards draw changing stuff in the agenda phase and then your flagship in a defensive maneuver so all kinds of different things going on not one real sort of synergy um just amongst themselves um i think we'll just very quickly take a look at their at their promissory note this one here um, it is Keller as Rider, which is after an agenda is revealed, you cannot vote on this agenda. Predict allowed an outcome of this agenda. If your prediction is correct, draw a card and gain two trade goods. Then return this to the Keller's player. So it's similar to what we've seen earlier with the extra hero, um, just for someone else to have. And um, so, yeah, it's pretty good. Adds a little bit of mystique to the game, especially in the agenda phase. So um, one of the more interesting promissory notes that they've done. Next up I think we'll take a look at the mech. Okay so wish me luck with the pronunciation here. This is Omniopiaris. Definitely got that wrong. Um, it is the Keller is mech um, and it reads other players must spend one influence to commit ground forces to the planet that contains this unit. Now we're going to go to the board and show an example or two of this one because there are some little interesting nuggets to, to learn from this one. All right, so let's take a look at this one now in more detail. Let's say you are the green player and you've got some infantry um, and that you have flown some ships into Keller's territory. Um, for the sake of argument, um, we're not gonna do space combat in there as an example, there's no need, but let's say you fly um, a carrier in here with your two infantry on it. Um, if you want to commit your forces to attack Mir, which has a Keller's mech on it here, you need to spend an influence. So you spend an influence, you can drop your two guys down. Doesn't matter how many guys you send down, it just costs the, the one influence. Now, if you want to send um, units down to Aranam with the two mechs on it, you're going to have to spend two influence to send down your guys. Even if it was just one um, one infantry and there's an additional wrinkle to this that is going to probably irritate you because <laughs> I know it annoys me and it happened in the game that I played with these is that each of these mechs has this ability okay this doesn't make the number two 
it's not spend two influence because you've got two mechs it's each mech's ability happens okay so now the, why that's important is if you are using a card to spend the influence to land on this planet and that card has more than one on it it's totally irrelevant you're going to need to spend influence from the second source to drop guys down here let me explain that in a bit better detail okay so let's say i'm just gonna move this out of the way for a minute let's say that you're the green player and these are your cards okay if you have your two infantry on this carrier and you want to land on Aranam, you can't just exhaust the one with two influence on it because that's only if um that's only paying for the first mech's ability which is to spend one influence you're not getting any change from this either um, if you're spending the bar as the with the one influence here that's the same as spending this one um, you're gonna have to use both of those cards to get your to get your uh, infantry down on the planet no matter how many it is whether that's one whether that's two or whether it's more and that's the real power of this mech it's keeping them in groups it's a way to deter your opponent from attacking because even if they've got mechatol rex which has six influence on it if you've got four mechs there that mechatol rex card is only going to negate one of the mech's abilities so it's a really 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 difficult thing to take planets from the kellers if they've got more than one mech sitting on the planet already waiting to defend I think these mechs are really good. They they also have sustained damage and the standard two cost six combat. They're they're like every other mech in the game in that regard. But this whole um, deterrent thing uh, makes them one of the stronger mechs in my opinion. Especially if you can group them up like this and have multiple on the one planet. If you've got a planet like Mechatol Rex as a, as an example that you really want to defend, mechs are good defensive ground forces already. But grouping them together means that your opponent's going to have to really pay. Uh, a lot of resources in the form of influence to even make the attack so really like this mech one of the best things about the Kellerus okay so let's take a look at the racial tech for the council Kellerus now these ones are also very interesting and, and again different alright so there's another bunch of stuff going on here with these um, they're both yellow focused uh, the first one requires a single yellow the second requires two but this one can lead into this one if you want um, the first one is IIHQ Modernization um, and it reads you are neighbors with all players that have units or control planets in or adjacent to the Mechatol Rex system so your neighbors to everybody around Mechatol Rex in short gain the custodian Vigilia planet card and its legendary planet ability card you cannot lose these cards and this card cannot have an X or Y assimilator token placed on it um, so here is the planet card, the Custodia Vigilia card, and it also has a legendary ability associated with it. Now as a reminder, just the last part here, the X or Y assimilator tokens, uh, that, that's these guys here, the Necroviruses special steal the technology tokens. So this is just a kind of a, hey, Necro can't steal this. Um, footnote on the card really more so than anything else so uh, you don't need to worry about that one especially if you're not playing against Necro um, so the Custodia Vigilia planet itself so this this adds a whole lot of complexity because of the fact that it technically isn't on the board um, because you cannot lose either of these cards so it adds kind of complexity right so it has two resources and three influence um, nothing on the back and it has this ability here which reads while you control Mechatol Rex it gains Space Cannon 5 in Production 3 so it's a defensive stronghold for Mechatol Rex and the whole theming of the Keller is, is that they're like the council that sit in Mechatol Rex and sort of control the political landscape of the galaxy um, the other part is gain two command tokens when another player gains VP using Imperial so yeah people are going to be doing this all the time so you're going to be getting command tokens all the time um and because this planet doesn't sit on the board there is no hex with this planet on it for players to activate and take from you this is going to be yours for the rest of the game and there's nothing anybody can do about it so you're getting 
a good planet with great ability um, especially if you're going for Mechtorex which you should like most people should always be going for Mechtorex um, you're bolstering it down you're making it stronger and you're getting command tokens whenever someone uses Imperial it's a, a kind of a all round really good ability it's a total no brainer to go for this especially near the start of the game so when you are picking your um, starting tech which if you'll remember um, can be any two techs that are non-faction controlled by the other players just keep that in mind that the yellow ones allow you to get this one and the next one faster so just keep that in mind when you're making that decision then on to the second racial tech agency supply network which reads whenever you resolve one of your production abilities and it can be this on Mechatol Rex right or it can be a space dock um, you may resolve an additional one of your production abilities in any system and the additional use does not trigger this ability so you can trigger the production on Mechatol Rex here and your home system as the second one um, now that's the Council Keller is honestly one of the most complex factions in the game um, the absolute wealth of diversity that they give you with the different setups the fact that you can pretty much have any technology at the start of the game um, <laughs> their flagship that locks things down their mechs that lock things down um, the three different heroes um, the technology, the whole thing with commodities being used as, as trade goods. They offer a lot of flexibility and a lot of power in this game. I think they're one of the they're one of the factions that if you're if you're an experienced player, you see them as a bit of a challenge. So they they don't seem to excel at one really key thing, but they do have a toolbox of lots of different things that they can do. So they'll offer you a lot of flexibility without having one clear path. They don't kind of railroad you in in one real direction uh, i think the, one of the most key things is this um custodia vigilia planet thing um and the race tech the the whole thing of getting command tokens when other people do imperial nobody is going to stop using imperial uh, so you're kind of getting that two command tokens essentially all the time so get that as quick as you can no matter what your strategy because this just allows you to do more stuff um yeah so where they stack up with every other faction they they actually won the game i played with them um so they're one for all in games that i've played in with them so they seem good i think um when it comes to the future development of the game it's great to see factions getting thrown into the codex like this is um this is a print on on some uh mouse pad style material that I got with the, with the cards and other stuff on a, from an Etsy seller and it's really decent quality um, also gave one of these um, Chi Chi cards as well so look that up if you're looking to play as them get a good quality one so that it actually is nice to use um, that's it that's the Kellers the Council Kellers and, um, the most recent faction in the game will they be the last one ever remains to be seen hopefully not because this one was really really cool really great addition to the game and something that i look forward to playing more so this has been rule breaker best of luck and enjoy your games so long. Mm -hmm.